We're going to do the sketch, organize, and solve for forces. So when we start with our sketch, we want just a basic drawing, a simple drawing. And that's just to help us understand where things are and what's going on. After that, we want to put in an interaction diagram. And look at my video on interaction diagrams to kind of understand that. We're trying to keep you to do these videos bite-sized. And after we do our interaction diagram, our interaction diagram is going to inform us of our free body diagram. And again, we have another video on free body diagrams. But once we have the free body diagram, then what we are going to do is we have everything that we need from that, and then it's on to organizing. So our organizing step, we start with Newton's second law in vector form. So Newton's second law in vector form always starts with our acceleration as a vector equals, and then we're just adding up all of our individual forces. So whatever forces we have, we're just listing them from the free body diagram, and then divide the whole thing by mass. After we have our right, forces all listed out, then we do our second law in decomposed form. So when it's decomposed, then we have that our acceleration in the x is force 1 in the x plus force 2 in the x, and so on and so forth over the mass. So what we have to do is we have to use the free body diagram and the second law to understand which of these are 0, which of these are positive, which of these are non-zero. And we have to do the same in y as well, f1y plus f2y, so on and so forth over the mass. And then our last step in our organized step is to look at our acceleration constraints. So for this week, it'll oftentimes be told that one or both accelerations are zero. If we have a normal force, then the acceleration perpendicular to the surface is zero. If we have something moving at constant velocity, then all of its acceleration is zero. Or we might be told this acceleration is part of the problem. So that's what we mean with acceleration constraints, and then we can just plug them in nicely here into AX and AY. Once we have all that, then we are ready to solve. So if we're solving, we want to try to find one equation, one unknowns, and solve those first just because, right, that's a lot easier than other things. If we need to do two equation, two unknowns, what we want to do is we want to solve symbolically and then substitute in. The reason we want this is that if we'd set equations equal to each other, there's a chance that we remove one equation when we shouldn't, and then we're in a lot of trouble. And then after this, right, it's just kind of finishing out doing the math, and we want to then check our answer after this. So check back for a couple of times where we're going to have videos doing this. But that's it for today.